Okay, so I am calling this one exercise, spacious body, Laban Bartenev, and fitness and somatics. Because to me, there actually isn't a whole lot of difference of going into your body, whether you do it, well, for me. <laughs> oh, we got Maria in there too. Cool. All right. So, um, <laughs> Zoom and YouTube and phones and everything that we're dealing with these days are like just an exercise in coming back into focus, right? How do we do that? Nice to see you. Uh, okay, so we're going to start standing. And we're going to come into our bodies, into the sensation of being. We're going to notice the fabulous, gorgeous little kitties that have no business looking at the camera. They don't care. We can speak to their agent. Inhale, lift and exhale, but the pay grade isn't enough for them to bother looking at the camera. Inhale, lift, open it up. Ah, exhale, just feeling what it feels like to be in your body breathing. Open, reach it out and up, getting tall, feeling the ground underneath your feet, let it go. Inhale, open. Look up, exhale, let's bend the knees and drop it down. So let your head release. If it hurts your back to go up and down fully like that, then just stay up. But if you can, just bend, soften, release, surrender, grounding yourself on the toward the earth, and then inhale, drawing in the inspiration from the heavens. Exhale, bending your knees, connecting down to the ground. Inhale, radiating out and up, right? If we lift our arms up, if we look up, if we radiate upward, we feel good. And if we drop down, we get more grounded. Open it up, reach it out, and exhale, and release, and drop it down. Rolling it up. So I'm just going to explain something. that is. I'm still on this kick, but the people in my room haven't heard me talk about this. This, in Laban, we talk about our center of gravity being here, our pelvis center of gravity, our center of levity up here, our lungs. We can think of that breath coming in there, giving us lightness. But I just learned from Gil Headley, uh, and he learned it from a French osteopath. I believe his name is Jean Bessel. He's an orth yeah, osteopath, yeah, or osteopath, that we are pressurized. We're systems of pressure inside our body. So this in our guts is a high pressure system in our reproductive organs, pelvis, high pressure. Up here in the middle, abdomen, medium pressure. Up here at top, low, 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 low pressure. So this means that in our body, there is a natural upward lift, right? We don't have to suck it up and pull it in and lift it up. Our organs are already doing that. And our diaphragm is giving our organs this massage down. It's also holding them in so that our as Gil puts it, liver doesn't pop up through our mouth, right? So we have this diaphragm here, and it's actually coming in on kind of a diagonal, but it's like a dome. People say it's like an umbrella, but it's not like an umbrella like this. Like this. It's kind of an umbrella like that. So what I want to do is move with those. So here's the pressure thing. Like a high-pressure system wants to move into a low-pressure system, right? There's pressure. Low pressure. Oh, it's kind of cool. Huh. No pressure. Oh, totally cool, right? So that's what's happening in our body. This is happening on this level. So it can help us find levity in our body. It can help us find lightness if we understand that when we're kind of standing erect and vertical, without being too rigid, there's a natural sense of levity coming up because of the way that the pressure differentials are in our body. So we're going to start by moving our low, our highest pressure system, our center of gravity, circling around our pelvis. As we're doing that, maybe connecting with your feet into the earth, feeling the soles of your feet connecting to the planet. Yeah, we can find lightness in our body. Everything doesn't have to be like we have this. Some people have this idea of gravity just drawing us down. But it's not like that. We have these systems that give us rebound, resilience, change direction. And even our fascia, our tissue, learns to form by these relationships with gravity and levity, right? If I'm really slumpy all the time, I'm not allowing the levity in my body to help lift me up. Let's take our hands on our knees, circle your feet. Yeah. Some people, but maybe not you guys know that I fell off my pole on Monday and I was like, ooh, 
of course I didn't feel like I was injured right away, but then it's like, it, it can take a day, six hours to a day for things to show up. And I did kind of tweak my, um, peroneals right along here because I landed right on this foot on the edge. Doop. So, but they're actually doing really good now. So a lot of the stuff that we're doing right here and now is to, for me, for my own system, my own version of physical therapy to get into the tissue and be like, it's okay. It's okay, everybody. Okay. So we're going to come in and we're going to do a thing going out. So you're going to go toes, heel, toes, heel, toes, heel, coming back in. Heels, toes, heel, toes, heel, toes. Let's do the same side again. Toes, heel. My whole body's moving a little bit. Toes, heel, toes, heel, heel, toes, heel, toes, heel, toes. So I'm working that inner outer rotation so that I can get that tissue to have both directions, right? It can do both things. Let's try the other side. <coughs> toes, heel, toes, heel, toes. Heel, heel, toes, heel, toes, heel, toes. So this is that whole system. We can think of it going all the way up into our torso, into our psoas, which is in here, and coming inside. Yeah, it connects to the top knob of our lesser trochanter, femur head, lesser trochanter, greater trochanter. Lesser trochanter is a smaller knob. It's a little lower down. Greater trochanter, you should be able to feel out here. All right, let's just let that go for a second. Let's try them both at the same time. Going one, two, three, four, five. That's as far out as I'm going to go. Coming back in. One, two, three, four, five. Again, out. One, two, three, four, five. Feel all that weight shifting? One, two, three, four, five. So when I talk about spacious body, I'm talking about the inner space of the body that the interior spaces have the chance to move around each other so they can renegotiate, hydrate, heal, as well as like the spaciousness out and around us, right? Where we can feel into the world. I was, I did a couple of sessions on skin, right? So let's just do a little skin, just touch and reach, touch and reach, touch and reach. So I'm taking it up my arm and I'm just saying hello to my body as I'm kind of cycling through either the horizontal plane or sort of an inclined horizontal plane. And then let's go with our hand going under. So instead of top of the arm, under the arm. Yeah, one of my friends, Patty, was saying about the oxytocin, right? Oxytocin is the anti-stress uh, is the antidote to stress. And how do we get oxytocin? We get oxytocin through touch, usually with an intimate partner. Maybe it's the cats. We go and touch the cats and we can feel something. Or we touch ourselves and we go, oh yeah, I'm here. It's okay, right? Our body doesn't necessarily know the difference that it's not someone else touching me. I can go, oh, it's me. So let's just get the touch everywhere. Here I am. I don't know. I live in a very non-touchy culture. <laughs> like my family, <laughs> we're not very touchy. My With Anthony, it's a little more touchy, but I, it's not like super touchy. We're not like all over each other. So, yeah. So we might need to boost our oxytocin, oxytocin with some of our own touch, feeling the outer space of our body ha, and letting the inner space of our body like awaken to that. Let's go all the way up to our head, right? So we're getting also these neural connections, right, from the surface into the center, into our brain, nervous system, brain, relationship. Oh, I can feel parts of my body because I touch them, right? Otherwise, it kind of goes offline and we don't even know we have this stuff. Let's take it down to the floor. Hello, Peapod. If you haven't seen this before, Peapod is a Manx cat. Nothing has happened to her tail. She's just got that little sort of stogie edged. Let's take the back of the hands towards each other, spiral. Feel the back of the lungs just opening up. And then inhale, front of the lungs. We're going to go through our arms. Exhale, internal rotation in the arms. External rotation in the arms. Sorry, exhale back. Inhale, open. Exhale back. 
Inhale, open. Exhale, back. Inhale, open. Exhale, back. Inhale, open. Hi, huh, yeah. So I used to always do it here and just have people come up to vertical to stack up to find that relationship of the <laughs> the levity and the gravity. But I feel like people need to open the front of their bodies a little bit more. So let's actually just go. Let's go through for a second. Take your arms back and little circles behind you. Ah, reaching out through your fingers. Feel your fingertips. Feel the space in the back of your body. And then change direction. Circle the other way. Feel the front of your chest and your pecs opening up. Deltoids. Front of the deltoids opening up. Ah, you could even look up. And then release. Take it down. Grab onto your knees and just curl. Curling your spine. Head tail connection, head to tail in this beautiful curl. Feeling as if all parts of the curl are even. So, you know, we have that natural curve in our thoracic spine. So work a little bit more to get some lower curves just to open up the space of your lower back. And then we're going to take our hands behind. You can also do this with your shoulders on the floor and just inhale. Lift and exhale, taking it back if you can. Inhale up. If not, just down to here is fine. Exhale down. Use your breath. And come down, all the way down to the floor. Eventually, I actually I will post a video of my fall off the pole because it's kind of spectacular. And it allowed me to really see what I hit when I landed. Because I was like, mm, I feel like I kind of have this thing going on here. And then I see how I landed. I'm like, oh, that's why. And uh, I didn't want to post it until I knew I was going to be okay. Because I didn't need to see myself getting injured if I was really injured. Or have the whole world see it. But since I'm actually going to be fine, I'll eventually post it. I'll put it in my shorts. Uh, the shorts on YouTube, not these ones. Let's drop down. Dropping the knees from side to side massaging through the lower back, right? So as we're rolling across our back, this tissue, there's a big swath of connective tissue, of fascia, coming down into your um, sacrum, right? That helps you be supported. And uh, that helps you <laughs> be erect in your back. It helps hold you up. So as we're rolling across it, we're letting the Shear a little bit, a little bit of shear and a little bit of compression, massage it out. So if I roll back and forth a little bit, I'm providing shear, S H E A R. I think that's how you spell it. Or maybe it's S H E R E. I don't know. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's S H E A R, like shearing. But sh shear means that like it's pulling like that, right? It's, it's connected and moving as opposed to just rolling across. So here's rolling, here's shear grabbing it, moving the whole thing. So we can play with that by just rolling back and forth or, or rocking back and forth. Then we roll across, we get the com compression, do a little rock. And I can feel like between the floor and the big bones of my pelvis, all that sort of sandwich of muscles and fascia getting some a lot of movement. All right, let's, let's go back and forth a couple more times. If you want to take it deeper, bigger stretch, reach your foot across. Ah, opening the chest and lungs. Feel the space inside your body as you're moving into the space outside your body. Yeah, so bring it back in. I feel like when we're doing anything with our body on any level, whether we're running, walking, doing some like deep internal meditation, we can practice with somatics, which just means that we're bringing our awareness into our body in an experiential manner. So it's not a outside performative, let me look at that thing and make sure it's perfect. It's an inside experience inquiry. Like, what does this feel like? That, that's what we're, when we add the somatic picture, it's body as dynamic experience as opposed to body as object. Like sometimes fitness really objectifies the body. Like, oh, my leg is too fat or my butt needs to look like this or my this or that. Like we're, we're looking at our body as if it's not a living process that we are part of. 
But we, when we do the somatic part, we're like, oh, I'm in this wonderful thing. What does it feel like? Maybe it's not wonderful. Maybe it's just, the, and it's not even a thing. I'm in this process. What's happening in here? All right, let's lift the pelvis up. Big circles. So we've got that high pressure system in the pelvis circling around, right? And what happens to those pressure systems when we change our relationship with gravity? I think that I don't think that the pressure system changes just because the relationship does. But what does change is the fluid in our body is going to pull a little bit more down, right? So that's part of how movement hydrates tissue, different relationships to gravity hydrate tissue. Pelvis as high as you can go. I hope you went both ways. I did. Roll it down through your spine, vertebra by vertebra. Take your time. Bring your awareness in, feeling yourself connect piece by piece. When you get to the bottom, add an arch. And then curl, tail, roll it up. Again, we have this head-tail relationship happening here. And then soften rib cage lungs through your spine. And all the way down. Take an arch, roll it up. One more time, rolling all the way down, taking it back up to the top. So my feet are just a little wider than my hips. They're like maybe shoulder distance apart. From here, I'm going to interlace my hands behind my back, walk my shoulders closer together. If you can't do that, that's totally fine. Just leave your hands on the floor. You're going to inhale, knees open, and exhale, close. So here again, for my lower leg, I'm getting that movement in this side-side movement, right? Side-side mobility, which is going to shift my weight on my foot to the outer edge and the inner edge, which is also shifting in my bones from my tibia to my fibula as I'm shifting in and out. On a fascia level, I'm getting this internal rotation as my knees touch all the way, and then external rotation. And by doing all of these things, I'm giving my body the capacity to be in these different places, right? This is why I could fall off my pole and not get horribly injured. Come in, because my body's like, oh, I, I know that. I can do that. Press up. Heels off and heels down. Up and down. Up, down. Also, I was super lucky. Let's keep that in there. The goddess was on my side. Up and down. And it was like a real reality check for me to calm the fuck down because <laughs> I get too excited and I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing right now, right? Like I've got two shows coming up, one in two weeks in the city and then another one in October, Rocky Horror up here, and I need to be able to dance. <laughs> Open it up. So maybe this is not the time to go to pole class and do my hard tricks, right? So that's the, the lesson on the bigger scale of like, calm down, open up, grab on. If you just got offended by my swearing, I apologize. Sometimes I just love the color that cursing can add to language. Not when it's aimed at a person in a mean way, but when it's, I don't know, it just can be nice emphasis. Let's roll back and forth. Rolling through your spine, rounding through your spine. As far as cursing at other people is concerned, in my family growing up, that was a hard no. You do not curse at other people ever. So, yeah. I feel like that's kind of an important one in relationships. It certainly has served my relationship with Anthony really well. And let's take it down. Circles with your knees, mobilizing in the joints. So we're making these circles. This is a ball and socket joint where the femur head is going into the hip socket. Change direction. We have two big ball and socket joints in our body, and the other one is in our shoulder girdle. So both of these proximal joints, hips and shoulders, are uh, ball and socket joints. And so all ball and socket joints, they're, they love round movement. They love circles, like arm circles, leg circles. So let's shake it out for a second. Let it go. Rotate in and out. Let your fascia, let your muscles jiggle like jello, right? 
So I can feel this is my side that's a little more injured that it is not jiggling like the other sides, right? There's a little extra holding in there. I've been working, doing a lot of soft tissue work on myself. But I actually, this leg has had a few different injuries this past year. So uh, I believe that our body has tremendous healing capacity, but we really have to get in there, give it time, and but also movement. It's not like give it time and do nothing. I don't think that is helpful unless immediately for the first 24 hours maybe. But other than that, like I feel like movement is, well, for my body, movement is the thing. But that doesn't mean intense movement. It means very gentle, very soft, often. All right, let's take the big leg circles. Open out, flex, take it down, point your toes. Up and out. Small or big. So if you're hypermobile and you're doing these circles and there's a lot of popping and clicking, then think of really retracting your legs into the hip socket. If you are tight and there's a lot of popping and clicking, Think of lengthening your legs out of the hip sockets and make them smaller, right? They don't have to be big. Just shake it out, let it go. We're going to take our hands on, it's that thing that people do where they grab your knee. I'll just show you this way. And it's not fun when somebody else does it to you, but you're going to do it to yourself. You're going to grab your knee on both sides, digging your hands in, and you're just going to bend and straighten. Bend and straighten. Regrab whenever you need to. Bend and straighten. You don't need to point your toes or anything. We're just getting into the muscles and tendons that cross the knee, right? This is, you can move not on your knee, but I'm kind of just above my knee. You can move it up a little bit more and don't squeeze so hard that it's horribly painful, right? Just the right amount. that feels like, oh, that feels kind of good. And then release and come up. I just want to talk a little bit more about my process with soft tissue work. So after I studied movement analysis, I did, um, I studied Binda Gebabe's massage, which means connective tissue therapy. And it's like, it's all pulling through the, the fascia, pulling through the connective tissue. But it gave me a pretty good overview of the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, and fascia and how it interrelates. But then the other thing that I use a lot is I got a lot of twee na done by this doctor in New York called Dr. Ting. I had various injuries. I had tendonitis. I had like jammed my big toe and I had to dance on point. Like I had all sorts of crazy things and he could always fix it. So I, I know on a somatic level what he was doing to my body because I saw him do it and I felt it. So I use the same techniques that he used, just remembering what he did for my injuries and doing it to myself. And so I feel like that has been really healing for me. And just to say what that is, it's usually like really gentle, doesn't hurt at all, small circles, usually fairly close to a joint, but then also could be moving up and through, right? And he had, like, he was dealing with all the meridians and stuff like that. I'm not sure where those are, except for knowing where he was touching on my body. So we, le we have this so much capacity to learn but often we've been taught not to take agency for ourselves over what we learned or what somebody did to us. Like, I mean, you know, in the healing arts, like, oh, I went and got a massage and it felt so good when they did this one thing. Well, guess what? If, if it's not in some weird place, you can probably do that to yourself. All right, let's come on to our sides. Oh, it's a lecture day. Lots of thinking going on here. Bending your knees. We're going to make a circle. So it's going to come up, out, down, and in. So because of this injury, I'm doing a lot of extra leg work, right? I'm like, but not hard leg work, more mobility work so that I'm mobilizing fascia, mobilizing mm -hmm. tissue, letting anything that's stuck unstick, change direction. Let's flex down and point up. So yeah, adding the foot, if you can. Flex, point, pushing, bringing it in, and pushing with the leg, bringing it in. Let's do the other side right away. So we're just going to flip around. You can maybe roll over or flip around like I did. So other side, I'm going to add the flex to this part too. Flex down, point up. 
push with your foot, sole of your foot and you'll feel try not doing the foot try just leaving it pointing and f and feeling what's happening there and then add the foot to that so that's like the somatic part what does it feel like what's different when i add the flex pushing down i'm going to change direction i'm going to push down with the flex point and come up and in pushing down with the flex point and coming up and in so i feel for myself the whole system really working together. My leg is going straight down below me. I'm not in that Pilates pike. I want to lengthen out the front of my hip flexor, the front of my psoas, all the different things. So pushing down, pointing up, pushing down. Last one, pointing up and coming in. Right? So when I'm talking about spacious body, I'm really talking about awareness within the spaciousness of my body. What does it feel like when I do different things? So I could do an exercise and just be like, oh, I'm going up and down, I'm going up and down. But I could also go, what does it feel like this time? How is it different this time? Right? What am I feeling this time? And really stay present with, with what's going on in your body, listening in for what kind of recuperations do you want? So up, down, up, down, up, down. We're working our hamstrings, our back, our butt. We're opening the front. What would be a good recuperation for this? I hope you're joining me. So we might think a good recuperation would be this, right? I'm going to open up my hamstrings. But I also think a great recuperation would be going out of this forward-backward pattern into a spiraling pattern, right? A knee drop pattern. Or let's make it bigger and do a big twist. So we're, and I have to say, like, if you're a teacher, and I know a lot of teachers follow me, um, Look at what your class is doing, what they naturally do in their body. Because if somebody's doing something, like just without thinking about it, there's a there's a great chance that that's a good recuperation. Yeah, you could do this making it harder with extended legs. So if you want to. This for me is really helpful for my back. And also for getting the spiral that I, I need in my body and a lot of pole dancing stuff. I am really connected into my arms, feeling the floor, and feeling my legs from side to side. I'm massaging through my back, feeling into my shoulder blades as I open and close. Lots of activity here. Good, and bring it in. And let's just go for a big stretch. A big inner thigh stretch, opening out. Flexing and pointing. And then you're going to internally rotate and externally rotate. I'm just doing it with flexed feet so you can see. You could try it with pointed feet. Can you internally or externally rotate here? Might be easier up here. I have to say, I am much better at my, like, I can do this much better now than I could when I was doing a lot of ballet. A lot of ballet is going to be a lot of external rotation, very little internal rotation. So then the, the muscles in the fascia form in a certain way to support that movement. But then if you need to be parallel or turned in, tissue is going to have a really hard time doing that. Arms up over your head in a V, open your feet wide, internally rotate one leg at a time. Breathing. Yeah, so just to give you, uh, I'm going to go back to my talk about this pole fall that I did. I was in an, a Russian split, which is essentially upside down with in a split. My head is down. My arms are pulling the pole. Like Actually, it's like this. The pole is here, but it's going, that's up. And my, my one hand just slid down. So I didn't have the leverage to stay in the position, and my, I just fell off the pole. But I, I stayed holding here. This leg was still over my head for most of the time. I came down. Well, this is the foot that, was, that I landed on. But I landed on the outside of that foot. Then my butt hit, and then my back hit the pole. Um, and I was, like, not that high off the ground, thank God. And so the next day, or that day and the next day, I like took it super easy. I did tons of hot water on it. So that softens the fascia that, and the superficial fascia. If you look 
at what superficial fascia looks like. It kind of looks like corn on the cob. It's like yellow and kind of fatty. And people who haven't seen inside the body are always like, oh, it's my cellulite. Not everybody. Some people are like that. Some people have a hard time with that. But it's like a massively protective system that's keeping us warm, relating to the environment, all sorts of stuff. So if we heat that all up, it kind of melts, which gives the fascia a chance to reform. So if you've got like that kind of injury that I had, it's like it, you're giving that fascia the chance to just like melt. So it's not like, ah, and then I did some ice as well, but I didn't do ice until the next day. I did heat and then ice the next day, but I did take it easy. Let's open up into a big straddle. And I'm just saying this because we have so much capacity for healing within our own bodies, but our current medical system doesn't talk about it that way. Like, and, and I'm not saying, oh, you fell off the thing and broke your leg, you can heal it. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'm talking about what's happening for me in my own system, my relationship with the world, my relationship with my life. But to put the idea out there that our bodies are healing machines given the right capacity, the right opportunity. Let's go with hands behind your head, flex your feet, taking it down and lifting up. Reaching out. So my legs are reaching into space, like very actively reaching, pushing out through my heels, side, side body. Yeah, I also did a lot of somatic practice of being like just really in myself and telling my body you're going to be fine. Like, you know, when a little kid falls down and there's the moment before they either start screaming or they go, oh, I'm actually OK. And if you get in there, you're like, you're OK, you're OK. And, and there's not a, oh, are you OK? It's a different thing, right? There's a different nervous system response. So as soon as I fell off the pole, I put my hands on my ankle. I'm like, OK, what's going on here? I'm sure you guys are all really sick of listening to me talk about my pole fall. But that's what's happening in my life. Let's turn and face the leg, take it down. Bring it into center. Over to the other side. Back into center. And come in and up and like bang it out. The other thing I did was eat a lot of protein, right? I was like, okay, and not drink any alcohol. <sighs> Took some vitamins, rotate in and out. Like we can, you know, affect our tissue in positive ways all the time by what we decide to eat or do. Let's uh, bend one knee and then the other. I had chicken. <laughs> And I've also recently stopped eating wheat because my body has a hard time digesting it. And so that also helped less inflammation in the body. Inhale, heels up, round the spine, roll it forward. I'm not saying this is what you should do. I'm just saying, think about it. Often we, often we know, we know on some level what is good and bad for us. And still, I mean, I have to say, I still enjoy a glass of wine. I'm probably not going to stop entirely doing that, but I can be smart about how I do it. Rolling forward, reaching forward, pushing back. Drop your head. Or at least informed about it. Huberman, Andrew Huberman does a thing about alcohol on his podcast. And he basically, I mean, basically what he's saying is it's poison. The reason you feel anything is because <laughs> it's poison. But I have to say, if that poison is making you feel happy for a little while, it might be worth it. Take it to the side, open it up. But you probably want to quit before it goes to the other side where you feel shitty, right? I mean, like have a drink, have two drinks and then stop or have nothing if you really want to be healthy. But sometimes, you know, family is involved. Let's take your knee down to the floor. You're going to come onto your side. We're going to add some arm circles here heart, lungs, ribs, taking up space, big, expansive inhale, exhale. And, and when I say families involved, like sometimes there's family patterning, right? Like, oh, we get together, we have a drink at dinner or whatever. Or, oh my God, I have to deal with my family. I'm going to have a drink, like <laughs> whatever it is. Take it in. I don't endorse it, but do what you got to do. And let's go over to the other side. Your knee is going to come down onto the side. Or say, I don't recommend it. Let's say that. At the same time, 
We all have to live our lives and make our choices. Oh, Laura, shut up. Stop lecturing. And then come back in. And let's take it back to your downward dog. Really reaching heel, sit bone, lengthening that out, up and down with the feet. And let's take it all the way forward. We're going to lower it down to the floor in 10 counts, going 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bend your knees, drop it from side to side. Let that massage out your quads, relax your feet, wag your big bushy tail like a happy fox. And then coming in, let's do this one. You're going to take your elbows underneath your shoulders, and you're just going to look over one shoulder, bring it back, look over the other shoulder. So your upper arm should be perpendicular to the floor. Then you're going to push and look over that shoulder. Push. There are, there are some sparrows, some house sparrows out in the yard, and the kitties are like, what's going on? The birds are really um, excited this, this time of year. There's a lot of activity out in the backyard with the birds. All right, now we're going to add to it. You're going to look over your shoulder. You're going to bend the opposite leg. You're going to point, flex, and change. Look towards your foot, point, flex, change, point, flex, change, point, flex, change, point, flex, change, point. Point, flex, change, point, flex, change. Last one. Point, flex, change. Relax it down. Free up your spine. Head, tail, freedom. Let it go. Wheedle around your pelvis. Free up your ribcage and lungs. Free up your head and neck. So letting the whole pattern from your tail to your head be spacious and have movement. And then we're going to curl the toes under, relax your knees on the floor, and just push up and down. Big deep breath. On the exhale, soften your body, let go. Tops of the feet on the floor, arms outside side, circles. Wings of the heart and lungs, feeling all the way out to your fingertips. Change direction. Back body. We're lifting and then reaching out. Take your hands next to your chest. Arch up. And then exhale. Roll it back down. Think of maybe initiating even with your nose. Nose reaches out. Eyes look up. Look, 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 look. If you want to bend your knees, go for it. Taking it back down. Lift and open. And take it back. So I think that one thing that is really apparent to me, and I keep hearing more and more about it, is that our bodies form to be able to do what we're doing, like to support our, our, the way that we're treating our bodies. So I think the old model was like, you've got this one body and it's just going to start breaking down, breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. But that's not the way it is. Especially if you engage with your awareness in a somatic way, with the way that you're engaging in movement in the world, give yourself as much recuperation as you need. But we can, like they were saying, I was listening to this, um, God, I can't remember who it was. Somebody talking about running. And how, like, if you start running, your bones are going to heart, get harder so they, that you, you know, you're building the capacity to do more. So you don't want to start running by, like, I'm going to run a marathon first thing, right? You want to start small and build incrementally, like slow building for, the, for creating the strength, the flexibility, the endurance for your body is, is the healthiest way to do it. But no matter how old you are, you can build muscle, you can get your, your bones can get stronger. All the things can shift and change when you just 
take on more. I'm going to do a little bit more weight bearing. I'm going to do a little bit more outside walking. I'm going to take in more sunlight. Like when we do these things, it shifts our physiology in a really healthy way. Yeah, it's the birds. She's all excited about it. She has this way of getting very flat. And her, you, <laughs> it's kind of dark on the video, but she's so funny. When she when she chases something around, she's like practically on the floor. And it's just these like white little arms and legs flapping all over. They're so fast. Okay, enough cat, cat talk. Let's come back onto our sides. One more time in a side plank, pressing up. Feel your head reaching away from your feet. So the primary action here, I mean, we're doing this, but is elongating your whole body. Pulsing up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Flip it around to the other side. Pressing it up. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and take it down. And let's uh, stretch our legs out in front of us. Side stretch. So I took a workshop recently with Dylan Newcomb. He has created this whole thing called Uzazu, and it's like. Ooh, Zazu. That's why it's called Zazu. Like he gave that demonstration, which I kind of like. It's like, come into yourself with delicious. Ah, go out and bring it back in. But one thing that he talked about, and I found this really helpful, is this idea of being overactivated or underactivated. And we talk about this a lot with the nervous system, but this can happen in a relationship. Like, I'm the one doing everything. Okay, you're overactivated in that in that in that relationship back off, right? Or like, I'm so worried about something. Okay, you're overactivated about that. Just back off a little bit. Or I really don't care. You're underactivated. Walk away from it or engage a little bit more. But just thinking about these, and this could be in terms of relationship to other, could be in terms of relationship to self, could be in terms of like a project, a collaboration. But if we start to notice in our systems and then there's the, the perfect level where you're neither over or under activated. You're right there in the sweet spot, in the flow, right? It's all happening. But I feel like just thinking about that or noticing it in other people, like, oh, like I was in rehearsal last night for Rocky and some people, and for me, it's hard. I'm used to being a director. So I'm kind of overactivated and they should do this. They should do that. And I'm like, okay, that's not your job today. Back off, come back into yourself. You, that's not you. You can be in the middle place where you don't have to be in charge of anybody. Just do your thing. So like, you know, when we notice these things about ourselves, we can see it in other people. It's like, oh, it's a little overactivation over there. And it's not about judging everybody. It's just maybe being more empathetic because, oh, are there places where I do that too? All right. So let's do um, just a forward backward. I'm going to show it to you sideways. If you have knee issues and you can't go deep, you're just going to come here and just shift your weight forward and backward. If you're okay with going deep, you're going to take it down into a squat, drop your head, really let your head drop forward. So as I'm in this position, I keep just telling myself, can I let go more? Can I relax deeper? So I'm getting this whole thing through my back body. And then I'm just going to shift my weight slightly forward and backward. And this, like one reason we're doing this is because this is really, so my injured side is the other side, but I can really feel it in my foot, the sole of my foot around my ankle. But when I say I really feel it, it's not painful. It's just like, oh, hello. I can bring my awareness into that part of my body and also really release my back, right? So these fascial trains are moving through our whole body. We're one whole connected system. Take your heels down to the floor, stretch it up, let your head go, shake it no, nod yes. Bend your knees, rolling all the way up to the top, feeling your feet on the floor. And now just take your weight and shift it forward and backward again, feeling that weight shift. And then let's do that side side thing that I was doing before, right? So I'm rolling over my foot one way, and I'm actually picking up my toes for this. My toes are picked up. What happens if I put my toes down? It changes. Try it both ways. Yeah, I get more into the dome of my arch. So one thing I learned about 
So he, these are my peroneals, these muscles up the side of my leg. Uh, the lower one just inserts here. The upper one, I think, inserts all the way under here. And, and ballet dancers tend to have really tight, weird peroneals because they're always externally rotating. They're not doing anything internal. Um, but people who have high insteps are more likely to have that peroneal tendonitis than people who have flatter feet, just to be aware. So what we're doing is we're working with that side to side movement to get the fascia, the muscle fiber, and the fluid to just renegotiate the space between the bones. And then I'm gonna do it with my feet toes down because two days ago I could not do this move, right? So I'm like, okay, but I've done so much work on it that it's like, it's, it's shifted a lot. Anyway, that's why I'm just sharing that because we have so much capacity to change and, and heal things. All right, let's, let's do some space because this is the spacious body thing. So let's just do plain old octahedron, octahedron, up, down, side, side, forward, backwards. So we're going to do, I'm on my left, you're going to be on your right. We're going to go up, vertical, and down. Let's just do that three times, up and down, up and down, up and down. If it hurts to go all the way down, just go, don't go all the way down. Really work with what works for you. So other side, up and down, reaching high, tippy toes, taking it to the floor, extra one. Then we're gonna go side, side, crossing and opening. I'm gonna do my left, it's your right, crossing over the top, arm and leg, opening wide through the horizontal, side across, open. How wide can you get? How big is your weight shift? Open, let's do one more. Let's go with fours instead of threes. And then the other side, this side, crossing, opening wide, moving through the horizontal, side across, side open. Right, sometimes when you can't go forward and backward, you can go side side instead, right? Maybe you can't go forward this way, but maybe if you go over here, then you can go forward, right? Maybe you need a little side side time. Let's just do a little of that kind of side side like basketball thing. This is all part of my own personal physical therapy program that I have created for myself, and I am only a somatic educator, laban, dancer, not a physical therapist, but this stuff works for me. And I'm like, yeah, my foot doesn't want to run, but the side side thing, it's like, oh, that's not so bad. Okay, let's go backward, forward, sagittal. This side of the body, taking it behind you, and then straight forward and through. Backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards, one more. Backwards and forwards. Other side, same thing. Taking it backwards and forwards backwards. Oh, Maria, I am going into the city today to teach some of Mark's mentees, <laughs> which should be super fun. I get to do an embodiment class. Let's put the whole thing together. Up, down, cross, open, backward, forward. Up, down, vertical, side across, side open, horizontal, backwards and forwards, sagittal. Switch it to the other side. Up, down, vertical, side across, side open, horizontal, backwards and forwards. One more time each side. Vertical, up, down. Imagine a line. Side across this point to that point, a line. Backwards and forwards. So you're in the middle of that whole thing, right? It's the dimensional cross of axis, the six directions. You're that middle point, up, down. Cross it over, and the middle point is moving because we're taking up some space. Backwards and forwards. Let's just breathe. Inhale. Taking in the inspiration. Whoo, shaking out whatever you need to get rid of. <laughs> Let it go. Ha, ah, is there some part of your body that's holding on that you don't need to hold on to? Right? Inhale, open. Exhale, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know the boundary until we've crossed it, right? Sometimes, oops, shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have gone there, and we don't know. But that's how we learn, and that's what life is, right? This balance. Take it down, shift from side to side. We're almost done.
yeah, the two little rock stars are still very busy watching the birds outside. All right, I'm going to come in and end the live stream. If you are in TV land, please like, subscribe, share, tell your mom to subscribe and, and your dad. And uh, yes, that's it.